Tony, just what have you seen from Blade his first couple of games back uh, on mound in live game situations? Improvement. Um, a lot of times our players have to listen to my theories, whether they're true or not. Um, is, is probably something that's up for debate. But I saw a guy that went out his first inning and, and wanted to take over the world in one inning and that being his first inning in quite some time. And, again, not that he didn't throw well. We, we, we discussed that after the game, a couple pitches removed from having a really good outing. But this outing in particular, I thought things looked a little cleaner, more efficient. He obviously got extended a little bit. Um, the thing I liked more than anything was the, the way he located a couple pitches, including – uh, two different breaking balls and, and, of course, fastball away from some of those right-handed hitters. So um, I, I think if there's daily improvement out of him, and we've already gotten to the point where there's daily improvement in health, and, again, you guys see how physical he's gotten and how good he looks, but if there's daily improvement on the mound, um, then he'll get exactly what he wants out of this season because there's still a lot of season left. Both Evan and Jordan have talked about the cutter slider that Will Mabry's added. Just how has that kind of changed his effectiveness this year? I think it's been one difference maker for him, um, you, you know, because when he first got here, the breaking ball would kind of pop up out of his hand and, you know, the command was suspect. Um, all these hitters are so good at making adjustments or reacting and the less time they have. I mean, it's one reason why Ben Joyce is, you know, exciting for fans to watch. But as a hitter, if he does start mixing in those off-speed pitches, you have so little time to adjust. But when it's kind of a loopy breaking ball, um, it, it doesn't work as well for a lot of guys. And so um, it's gotten sharper, kind of two different looks. You know, you, you brought up the cutter. So it's been one of many difference makers, and it's one that stands out to our kids. And not that we're necessarily that much smarter than those guys, but through experience we see a lot of little different things that Will has grown up, you know, over the few years. And he's not the only one in our program, uh, but he's made a lot of tiny adjustments that have turned into one big adjustment. Coach, going back to Blade real quick, over the weekend, is there a specific situation you're, you're kind of looking at to maybe get him in and get him, you know, more comfortable with pitching in sure. game-like situations? No, the 100% the honest answer is we're looking to win Friday's game. Um, if he happens to be the guy uh, somewhere between, you know, the beginning and the end of the game, obviously Burns will start the game, uh, then we'll go to him. Uh, before we would even do that, we'd want to make sure today he feels good playing catch. I mean, he played catch yesterday and, um, you know, two days rest after a two-inning start. You know, it depends on who you are as a, as a pitcher. Again, I feel like we're past the health point, but we'll check in, and if he's on the attendance sheet and good to go on Friday, then we'll just go with whatever we think the best situation is he can help us to win. But we truly don't have, like, a script. That's the first time y'all been home for a weekend in three weeks. Just how excited are y'all for that? Yeah, it feels good. I think the crowd more than anything. Um, it was nice being in Nashville. There was more Vanderbilt fans than Tennessee fans, but there was a lot of orange. And I think our guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, I also think it is a group um, that, unless they're fooling me, uh, they, they like to be challenged or they at least look forward to a challenge. And, and I think going on their first road test in Oxford – was something that um, they approached appropriately or the right way. Uh, but there's nothing better than playing in Lindsey Nelson Stadium if you're wearing orange and it's full of rabid fans. And uh, not 100% ideal weather, but it is 100%, you know, in the springtime for those fans to come out and see SEC baseball. And like you mentioned, it's been a while. So that fan aspect, I think, is something everyone's looking forward to more than anything. Chase Burns, uh, he's obviously pitching pretty well. What, what's your uh, thought process on him, fourth SEC series, compared to maybe that Georgia Southern opening game and then maybe even back in the Texas game uh, from like a trust factor aspect just as a true freshman with him? I think the thing you get into is you no longer, you know, start to overanalyze maybe as a coach like, well, he's never been out there after a long sit or quick three outs by, you know, our offense. Or he had to get out of a jam last inning, so maybe he kind of used up, you know, all the gas in his tank this early in the year. Pitch. So um, I think kind of like Blade has now established himself as a pitcher. Right now it's as a reliever. Um, I think Burnsy's kind of established himself as a, a true starter in college baseball. So the one thing we don't have to do, and I wouldn't anticipate his teammates do, is kind of second guess or analyze. What about? Do we need to kind of get him through this first 
situation, all that has passed him. So now it's just to see if he can get better each day. And we talked about it as a team, um, you know, yesterday. Get better each day doesn't mean necessarily if you threw a, a no hitter, which no one's done on our team. I don't, then you got to throw a perfect game, and then I don't know where you go from that. If your theory is to get better, it's just to get better at handling a bunch of different situations. And each week you play, there's going to be a new situation. You, every time you come to the ballpark, you see something new. You know, last Friday is a, a decent example. Uh, but you're always going to see something different when you show up to the ballpark. And if you happen to be the guy on the mound at the time, then you get one more new lesson learned. Mike and then Wes. How do you go about managing innings and keeping an eye on pitch counts when you have such a young weekend rotation that hasn't really gone through the, the longevity of a college baseball season before? Sure. I think it starts on the front end. Um, relative to other teams that I've been a part of, Coach Anderson is pretty methodical about how he brings guys along in the winter, which is technically our spring um, spring training. So it starts there, and it's a slow buildup. And then, again, on the front end, um, you know, I, I don't think you see us pushing our guys too much. I mean, to the point where, you know, I, I'm clenching my fist so much during that or, – or so uh, tensely in that Texas game because – all right, the thing we've planned to do is bring Chase out of the game, but he's rolling. Do we want to put the pedal to the metal? And at, at that particular time, it doesn't make sense. So, again, I think it's all on the front end. It's a slow buildup. We're still in the process of doing that. Um, I know Beamer didn't give us much of an option last Sunday, but one guy gets on base, he, he was coming out, and, and probably that was going to be his last hitter. He was going to – well, if it, if it wasn't his last hitter, the guy would have got on base. So there you go. Um, but, but I think it all starts on the front end and then man, managing a little bit as you go along. We're not too far from April, or, or I'm sorry, from May. So we, even though I said earlier we do got a lot of time before the end of the season, once you get to May, it's time to – you got a sore ankle, who cares? It's, it's time to play. you got to, you know, bruise thumb, hit by pitch or whatever, go play. Uh, maybe don't feel the best on the mound. If you're the guy with the ball in your hand, uh, make the coach rip it out of, out of there. Tony, you said a couple days ago that you wanted to do a little bit more homework on Mizzou before talking about them. It looks like, at least on paper, the past two weeks there's been a lot of improvement there. And, you know, beat Kansas pretty good yesterday. Past two SEC weekends, they've looked pretty good. What have you seen from those guys? Because they did lose a bunch of guys off that team last year. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that post game when we were talking, as you said. Uh, no, no, there was some turnover. Um, but I think as you settle into the year, um, you, you kind of get a vibe as a team. And, and I'm not in the dugout or at the games, but you would think, based off what you said, the results of, of beating a team like South Carolina. Um, Kansas has always been a massive rival for that school. Uh, you would think they would come in here with, with plenty of confidence. And probably like our team, starting to sort out some roles too. And as, as baseball players get more comfortable in their roles and knowing what's asked of them and where they fit in, um, you, you know, I think they start to play better. Uh, and then Friday night, you know, they come out of the gates with a guy who threw against us last year. And, and I recall, you know, seeing he had really good stuff, actually know the family really well, great people, um, had a brother that was a really good pitcher too. So uh, you'd like to look at the weekend as a whole and kind of start thinking matchups and what might this team do. You know, you're kind of referring to a scouting report thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we want to do is win the first inning. And it, like I said, it'll be Burnsy for them. And then, you know, I assume it'll be Miles, a pretty talented righty against us. With uh, Evan earlier mentioned that you know when some teams get that number one ranking by them, they, they start pressing, playing a little tighter. What's it been like for you just to watch how you guys have played with such poise and confidence so far with that ranking? It, it's been good, and, and I think they've gotten some assistance. I think there was a week where we were kind of number one, um, apparently, and then we were more certain number one. And then there was a week two where I think they're smart enough and there's experienced enough guys like Evan – if you're not focused on Mississippi when you're going into Oxford, you're going to get your doors blown off. Um, and, and then, two, um, with last weekend series, there's a lot that comes with it since they're in our vision, they're in our state, and all those things. Uh, so call them distractions if you want. But I think in our case it's been more of uh, you, know, you know something that's brought our focus uh, to more of a heightened sense of awareness. And when you're focused on things that you're looking to do, uh, you really don't have time for some of that.
and, and trust me, it's there, and I see them on their phone nonstop. I mean, they hang out at the stadium all the time, and they're on their phones just as much as any of us are. So it's out there, and, and they know it, and regardless whether the media thinks you stink or they think you're good or somewhere in between, it's not going anywhere. So you might as well read it and accept it, and then also come game time, push it to the side because it, it's not going to have anything to do with either beating or losing to Missouri or any other team in our league. Last year, you guys, with the preseason accolades, kind of got off to slow starts. Drew got off to a fast start and has been more consistent than he was last year. Why, why is that? Um, he's kind of got the Rubik's Cube thing going on where, um, you know, you try and get all – I've never had success of getting the panels all on the same side, but um, you try and figure it out, and then you make adjustments until you get it right. And in our sport, I, I think you could be um, – DeGrom, you could be Scherzer, you can be any of those guys. I don't think you ever really get it fully right, and that's one of the beauties of our game. But he's kind of got that deal where he's consistently getting better because he's trying to figure out how to handle this situation better or that situation better. And it all starts with his competitiveness. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out Drew doesn't like to not have success. Um, so in areas where he feels he needs improvement, he'll take coaching and things like that. But really what fuels him is internally he's, he's just got that self-motor that he's determined to figure things out and get them as good as they possibly can. And uh, you all are seeing the fruits of, of that labor a little bit. And there'll be new challenges that come up for Drew, and, and he'll attack them like a madman. Coach, with the injury to Jared Dickey, you've kind of slid some guys out there in left field. Just What's the competition been like and seeing those guys go out there and compete day in, day out? It, it's been good. It, it's been um, – you wish you had a, a little bit more time. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but Chris Moore's been out there. Everyone here knows he can hit. Um, he's a great athlete. I mean, that play he almost made at second base was kind of ridiculous. I know it was a pretty big almost against Lipscomb, if you remember. Um, but he's incredibly athletic. But this is college baseball. You really have to get used to playing. Just because you can play second doesn't mean you can play short or vice versa. Each spot is different. And so he's been out in left field. Kyle Booker, you just wish you had more time off the injury to get him more repetitions. Uh, Christian Scott can play anywhere. He's done with, well with opportunities. And uh, he's fully capable offensively, but you know you're going to get great defensive out of, out of him out there. Seth Stevenson's first year in left field. He seems to be getting better. It's his first year in Division I baseball. He's still kind of learning uh, certain situations. So, again, I guess you love the competition. You wish you had more time, but if you did – you'd probably have a healthy Jared Dickey, and now you got five SEC left fielders, and you only get to play one. Um, so very blessed to have each of those guys. And we'll just go with whatever option we think provides the most success for the team on that particular day. And uh, all I can do is hope and pray the guys all keep the same attitude they've had. Is when they're in the dugout, they're supporting their teammates. When they're on the field, they're competing like crazy for their teammates. Yeah, Coach, talking more about Chris Moore, with what you've seen from him at second and at the plate, of course, how high is his ceiling You know, with you guys? Uh, I think like most freshmen that play in the SEC, if you do it by number, um, I think in recruiting every kid wants to envision themselves on the field and uh, nobody decommit or anything like that. But um, reality is it's tough to play in the SEC as a freshman. That's why you sign up to go play in the SEC. It's tough. And it's the best challenge you're going to face until you can get to a Braves uniform or, or the Red Sox or whoever, whoever it might be, you know. But those guys that can play in this league as a freshman a lot of times tend out to be the best players on their team as juniors, um, a high draft pick as a junior, and guys who make it to the big leagues relatively quickly. And so that's, you know, by average. If we're just going to break it down to Chris Moore, I don't think there's anything he can't accomplish while he's here. Um, whether it be, uh, again, I, I could go down a laundry list of things. It could be a personal goal. He's really turned into a great teammate, so I know he would focus on team goals as much as that, uh, but he's capable of anything. And I would, I'd say the same about any, any freshman out there. Braswell for South Carolina is just one that comes to mind right away. But any freshman out there that's playing in our league or pitching in our league at a high level, right now you're a dude. We'll see if you can keep it that way. Thanks, Coach. Thank, Thank you all. Thanks,